Hello YouTube, I'm Dom the Musician. My name's Dom, I'm a musician. Here's my degree. In this series of videos, I'm looking at Murray Gold's music from Doctor Who series one and exploring what makes it so fantastic. I'm gonna be going through in roughly chronological order and talking about some of my favorite themes. I'll also be using some musical jargon, but I'll be providing a glossary of terms that you can find in the description. So even if you don't know anything about musical theory, you hopefully won't get lost. Let's go. According to the album liner notes, the original plan was to use Delia Derbyshire's original theme from the 60s. Murray thought it was so iconic he couldn't touch it, and he was daunted by the meticulous process that Delia Derbyshire went through to make it. We built up the orchestra with individual notes, and Delia would say, I think we need about 64 B flats and 25 E's and B's and things like that, and we cut them all out physically. So they were going to use it in its original form until Murray decided that it didn't seem to suit the ebullient clatter and chaos of the first episode. I added string lines, a booming horn and some clatter and chaos of my own. He also said on Edith Bowman's podcast, when Rose was cut and finished they realised they wanted something a bit more muscular. Something that gave you a feeling of resolution rather than a feeling of pure eeriness. So what did he change? The original is quite stark and minimalist. Uh, the original is quite stark and minimalist, based around two monophonic voices. Murray's version, on the other hand, is a swashbuckling pirate action theme. It's in six-eight time signature, the perfect time signature to swing a flagon of ale back and forth to. So where the original is monophonic melody and accompaniment, this fills in all the chords. You get these very rich E minors and B sevens. And I love the string counter melody. It contrasts nicely with the big sweeping main theme. And my favorite bit is the horns echoing the uh, D, C, B. And then on the last one, D, C, D sharp. Melodically, it's almost a mirror image of the main theme. And I think there's a triangle at the end. Because triangle players need to make a living too. It's easy to forget that before I am the doctor and a good man and all the strange, strange creatures, there was another adventure theme and it was called Westminster Bridge. We start with this grand orchestral intro as the camera zooms down to earth and the strings rise up the Dorian mode until it hits this imperfect cadence and then... Funky synth bass. Total genre change. The Saint Yanan's Doctor Who. This is cool 2005 Doctor Who where we have drum machines and surf rock guitars and arpeggiator synths. <laughs> Much like the theme tune itself, Westminster Bridge has uh, melody and accompaniment texture with this sequenced synth bass line and this electric guitar melody. Which recurs throughout the episode. After the opening scene, we hear the one, three, five, four theme being referenced again as the Doctor and Rose run from the Autons. The bass line comes back when they're being chased by the plastic Mickey. And then it's back at full strength when they find the transmitter. Fantastic. Throughout the series, Westminster Bridge serves as Doctor Who's version of the Fellowship theme. Or the Avengers theme. representing our team of heroes. It comes back in Aliens of London. I know, I can't believe I'm here to see this. This is fantastic. The Long Game. Boomtown.
and the parting of the ways. I think this last instance is my favourite because it's used to mark a turning point in the character of Jackie. Up till then, Westminster Bridge has been used in scenes where the Doctor and Rose are planning, running, working stuff out, etc. And here you've got Jackie, who's been quite antagonistic to the Doctor so far, showing up to help Rose save the day, even though it puts Rose in danger. And in doing so, she's rewarded by being allowed to share in this heroic theme. It's like the music saying, Jackie, you're an Avenger. Adventure now. This track is about curiosity and a lack of resolution. At first all the chords are a series of suspensions. There's tension and then resolution. Until you get to the second half and there's no resolution and the melody is just chromatic chaos. because Rose is still in the dark, she's barely scratched the surface. It's hard to miss the reference to the show's main theme. You get it in the Doctor's theme. And you get it here. I think it was really clever for Murray Gold to take that familiar ooh -ee -oo and uh, play it through the voice of soprano Menelie Pappenheim. It gives it a lot more humanity. Ironic for a show about an alien, but you know what I mean. And it seems like that was what Russell T Davis was going for with the series as a whole. Speaking of Melody Pappenheim, anyone recognise this melody? The assembled odds of Genghis Khan can get through that door, and believe me, they've tried. Now, shut up a minute. That's Doomsday. And I won't be doing spoilers beyond the series I'm covering, but for those of you who have seen series 2, isn't it mad that you hear that piece of music when Rose first enters the TARDIS? There's this idea with scoring music for the screen that music can either be objective, telling you how you should feel, or subjective showing you how a particular character feels. An example of objective music from a later series would be this moment in Series 8's Dark Water. I feel like I'm missing something obvious. The Doctor doesn't know the Cybermen involved, so this is Murray letting you in on that secret by playing the Cybermen theme. It's objective because the music comes from this outside, omniscient perspective. The Doctor's theme, on the other hand, is subjective in this episode because it shows you a particular character's emotional state. Notice that the theme doesn't begin until the Doctor starts walking away. It's not about him. It's about the impact he has on Rose. It's interesting to compare the scene to something like this. I'm the Doctor. I'm a Time Lord. I'm from the planet Gallifrey in the constellation of Castelbrus. I'm 903 years old and I'm the man who's going to save your lives and all 6 billion people on the planet below. In Voyage of the Damned, the music presents the Doctor as this heroic figure. And that's perhaps because in that episode, he's the point of view character. I like that by contrast, Rose takes the time to establish the companion first so that we see the Doctor through her eyes. And it stands to reason that he'd be quite an intimidating figure. And I hope the planet turns round and shits on you. That about wraps up this episode. Join me next time when I'll be talking about the end of the world and the unquiet dead. I haven't thought of a sign off yet, so just... <laughs>